If you've been struggling to get your Tui based devices to work reliably and quickly, or if you're concerned about security and want a method to keep these devices from having to talk to the cloud, then stay tuned to today's video where we're going to take a look at the local Tuya project for Home Assistant. So today's project is going to allow you to set up a direct communication between your Home Assistant instance and your Tuya based devices. So in theory, if you want to block access or these devices lose connection to the cloud, you'll still be able to control and see the status of these devices. Now, if you're experienced with other cloud-based integrations, including the Tuya version 2 integration for Home Assistant, then you know that when you send a command to your device, there's actually a bit of a delay. This is because your Home Assistant instance will typically reach out to an API endpoint in the cloud giving that command and then the cloud will relay that command back down to your local devices. This is of course very inefficient and could potentially be a security risk. Now the Tuya based devices do support local communication between the devices on your network, but you have to have a special security key to do this. That's where this integration shines. When this integration is first started up, it will communicate out to the Tuya cloud and grab a copy of these local keys and then store them in your Home Assistant instance. Then from that point forward, no cloud communication is required to control or update the devices. Now, I'm going to show you a method that I think is the easiest way possible to do this, but there are alternative ways to get the IDs and keys required for the project. But they're kind of hacky, they involve an old version of an Android app, or potentially emulating your Android apps on a PC. So I'd recommend sticking with the method I'm going to show you today. But if you're interested in some of these alternative methods, I do have links to them in the description. Now just a quick note on Tuya devices in general. You may not realize that quite a few brands out there actually don't use their own cloud services. Tuya offers their cloud services and firmware to other brands at a cost. Now, if you remember my Costco smart products video from about a year ago, the Fight Electric brand of smart home products works directly with both the Tuya Smart Life and the Tuya Smart apps. Other brands like BN Link and Atomy also work with the Tuya apps. The trick is to register your devices with the Tuya apps instead of the brand's native app. So before we proceed, make sure you have all of your devices set up in the Smart Life or Tuya Smart apps. Of course, you can go back and add more devices later, but you need to have at least one device set up and active in your account to complete this setup. Now, if you don't have the hack store already set up, I have a video up here in the cards or down in the description that will take you through how to install this super powerful community store in your home assistant instance. Man, I really need to update that thumbnail. Okay, so our first step is to make sure that we have our Tuya developer account set up and ready to go. Now, I've already covered setting up a Tuya account in my previous video on the Tuya V2 integration with Home Assistant, so you can find a link to it up in the cards or down in the description below. I'm gonna quickly take you through the setup steps that are required to grab the keys necessary for this project. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the Tuya developer portal at iot.tuya.com. And that's gonna bring us to this login page where if you already have an existing account, go ahead and log in. If not, you can sign up for a new one. Now, if you already have set up a Tuya integration previously, you can use those existing keys. So you can skip this next couple of steps in order to set up a project. So you can use your existing project if you already have one. If not, let me quickly show you how to set up the project. To do that, we need to go to Cloud and Development. You'll see all the projects that I have set up here. So again, if you already have one of these existing projects under the Smart Home Industry, you can use that. But if you need to create a new one, we click Create Cloud Project, give it a name. For under Industry, we need to select Smart Home. Development Method, we need to select Smart Home again. And data center, select the closest data center to where you live. In my case, it's Western America. Then we'll click Create. Then under the Authorized API Services, we need to scroll down on the left side and make sure we have the device log query selected. And then click Authorize. If you already have an existing project, you need to make sure you have that service API selected in here. If not, you can go ahead and go to Authorize and add it in there. But you need to make sure you have those items available. So the next step is we need to authorize our devices. And to do this, we're going to use our Tuya Smart Life app and connect it to our developer account. So to do that, we need to go to link to your app account and then say add app account. And you're gonna get a QR code here on screen that you're gonna to need to access using the Smart Life app. So now we're gonna to need to access our Tuya app, either the Tuya Smart or the Smart Life app and scan this QR code to tie our device account to our developer account. So in my case, I'm using the Tuya Smart app. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the application, click on the me, and then click on the, Q, the scanner at the corner. That's gonna bring up our camera, and then we can use that to scan the QR code. Then we need to hit confirm login. So one caveat is you can only have two projects tied to the same device account. So in my case, I already have those consumed, but once you scan that code, it will link those together if you haven't already used up all of your instances. So once your device account is tied into there, remember to come back to the screen because we're gonna need this UID later on. But to verify everything is good, we wanna see our list of devices. So I show nine devices here. If I click manage devices, you'll see all the devices that are currently in my account. So now we know that we have our accounts set up and tied together correctly. Let's go ahead and go to the screen to grab our keys. 
So to get our keys, we're gonna to need to go to the authorization tab. Right here on screen, we're gonna have our client ID and our client secret, which you can either view by clicking the eyeball or you can copy it here. Obviously, all this stuff is blurred out on my screen because this is actively tied to my account. So now that our developer account's set up, let's jump into setting up the integration. So the integration can be easily installed by going to the hack store. So we're gonna click hacks, integrations, and explore and add integrations. And then we're gonna search for local. The local to you should be part of the standard integration packages for hacks. So we're going to click on this, go down to install this repository in hacks and click install. This should take just a couple of minutes. Then you're going to need to restart your home assistant instance in order to have the integration show up in your integrations tab. So we'll go ahead and go to developer tools, YAML and restart. All right. While it's restarting, I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. All right. Now that home assistant has restarted. So to get to our integrations, we go to settings, integrations, click add integration and we search for local. You'll see the local TIA integration shows up here. Now in version 2022.10 and newer, they've started segmenting the integrations by company. So it's possible this could get rolled under to you, but right now it's still separate. But just in case in the future, if you can't find it and it did get installed properly, then you might also want to look under Tuya. So we'll go ahead and select local Tuya integration. And now it asks us for a bunch of stuff. So the first thing we need to do is select which region we're in. So in my case, US. So you can either be in the EU region, China, India, or US. Now we're going to need these three keys that we generated earlier. Let's hop back over into the Tuya IoT platform. And under access ID client ID, we're going to grab this key here and copy it and paste it into the first box. Then for access secret client secret, we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it into the secret box. Finally, user ID. This is not your email address. This is that UUID that we referred to earlier. So to get that, we'll hop back over into the device platform, click on devices, and then under link to your app account where it has your app account with its username. There's a UUID here. We'll grab this UUID and we're gonna paste it here. Now, if you do not wanna use the Cloud API account, you can click this here, but I recommend doing it this way, it's much easier. Click Submit, and it's gonna create the local to you. Now you'll notice nothing actually gets configured here. You actually have to manually set up each device. That's why it's important to keep our developer tab open because we're gonna to need to refer to some of the settings in there to make sure we have our devices set up correctly. So we need to click Configure, and then we're gonna add a new device. Click Submit here. Now this is gonna reach out and find anything on the same subnet. So if you do not find your device on the sub, on your subnet or you're using multiple VLANs, you can click down here to select and manually configure the devices. But in my case, all of them are all on my main subnet right now. So I've actually got two devices showing up here. Most of my two devices are in development, so I've got them in the box somewhere. But currently I have two active ones that I'm using. So I'll show you how to set these types up. One being a combination fan and light control, which is actually pretty nice. You have a location that didn't have a fan that you wanted to install, but you want to control those independently with one switch to the wall. And then I've got just a basic fight plug that I got from Costco. So these are gonna show you two different ways of setting this up. So depending on what type of device you have, you may have to set up multiple sensors or device controls for that device. So in the case of my fan, it's got both a light and a fan control. So let's start with the smart plug since it's simple. We're gonna click on this twin smart lamp and click submit. Now it's gonna go ahead and grab the keys out of the developer tab, find the IP address, the device ID, all that information will pull automatically and then it'll find the protocol version. If you have an issue with a, with a device, you can go back and set the scan interval or if you wanna lim limit that down, you can set that there. There's also manual data points if you wanna set that, but you can leave these two blank for now, we're not gonna mess with those. So I'll click submit and sometimes you have to hit that twice. If you do get an error message the first time, hit submit a few times and eventually it'll let you pass it. So now we need to select what type of platform we're gonna set up. And again, if your device has multiple things that it does. So for example, if you're going to want to set up a power sensor on a smart plug, if it supports that, we need to set up multiple sensors. So I would say start with the primary function of the device. In this case, it's a smart switch. This one, all it does is smart switch. So it's only going to have one device set up. So we're going to select platform switch, hit submit, and now it's going to ask us for a bunch of information. The first one being the primary ID value of this device. So we're going to go into the developer tab and we're going to look at the different outputs from the particular device and figure out which one correlates to the, to this ID. Now the primary ID for the device is going to be the main function. So in the case of the switch, the primary ID is the on off control of the device. Hey everyone, this is editor Ryan here. Really quick, I wanted to show you a definitive way of finding your data point ID, which is required for the next step. Instead of fumbling around and testing it, I, I did find a way thanks to the Zigbee 2MQTT help page, which I'll link here below. But to do this, all we need to do is go into our devices on our project. So the same place we were at before, pick a device. So we'll say the kitchen fan here, click on debug device and make sure it's selected here on the left. Go to device logs, 
And then we need to bring up our developer tools, which on most browsers on Windows is Control Shift I. Then we need to go to the Network tab. So once we have our developer tools loaded up, we want to select our DP ID. So in this case, Wind Speed Level. And then we're going to click Search. So it's going to search out and find those. Then down here in our Network tab, we want to find a an entry under the File with List. We'll click that. I'll drag this up so it's a little bit easier to see. We want to go to Request. And then right here, we'll see code with a number in there. In this case, code three. So then I know that it's going to talk to DPID3 to retrieve the wind speed level and control the wind speed level. So if I want to select something else like light, I can do the same thing, click search. Now a new entry has come under post. So again, we'll go to the request tab and there it is, code nine. So if I select a diff different device like the star lamp, so if I want to switch device, we'll go ahead and clear this, go to the twin star lamp, Select the DPID I'm looking for, which in this case is the switch, and click search. Again, we'll get another post method with list. Click that, and there's my code one. So this way you can definitively debug all of your devices and figure out the different DPIDs for the different functions. So back to the video. So we can pop back over to the IoT platform, go to our devices, all devices, and we're gonna find this twin smart lamp right here. So I'm gonna go to debug device and go to device debugging tab. Now this is gonna show me over here on the right, everything that this is capable of. So if I flick this switch here, it's gonna turn the switch on and off. What you'll see over here, that switch is a Boolean of true or false. So it's currently off, so we'll pop over here to the platform and we see our first ID, which is probably what it is, is the only Boolean on here. So it's currently showing us false. Now if I were to switch this on and go back and come forward, it, this should probably switch to true. So this is most likely the control that I'm looking for here. So I'm gonna give it a friendly name. So this plug doesn't actually have power monitoring on board. Apparently it does output the voltage, but it doesn't output the current. So in this case, I'm gonna select 123.9. And again, you can do the same thing for current if yours does support current or current consumption. We wanna go ahead and select restore the last set value in home assistant. So that way, if the switch is off, it'll it, when it gets resumed to power, it'll turn back off again. And then we're gonna click submit. Now, if your device has multiple things on it, like we'll see here in a second with the fan, you're gonna to wanna to uncheck this do not add any more entities. So this, since this device only has one control, we're gonna go ahead and click submit and that's gonna finish that device. All right, so if we look here, we've got one device and that's our twin star lamp. We can click on that. And if we go to attributes, we'll see our voltage is actually listed right there. So let's head back and we will go to configure, add new device. We're gonna do the kitchen fan, leave all these variables the same, click next. So the first thing we're gonna go after is the fan. So click submit. Now we know that if we look at the two year platform, currently the fan is on, the light is off and there's a fan beep. So there's three potential Boolean variables that we have to select to make sure we have the correct output select. Know that value one is the primary function of this particular device and that is the fan. So I'm gonna call this one kitchen table fan. Now, if we look here, we have another variable called the fan speed and that outputs a integer of one, two or three as the range. So we'll select that to be number three, fan oscillating control. I'm gonna leave these blank because I don't have that function on here. The only other function I'm gonna change is the maximum fan speed integer. Set that to three and then set my value type to integer. The reason is again, because right here we know that there's only three values for the range here. So if yours has more range values in here, then you can set this to five or nine or whatever. We know it's an integer because it's a number. Click submit. Now, since we're gonna be setting up additional components to the same device, we do we wanna uncheck this, do not add any more entities. Now we're gonna do the light. So we're gonna select light and submit. Now we know that the light is currently off because it shows it as false here. So then this has to be value number nine. Now, I don't have any other functions in here. I don't have brightness or color temperature. Again, you can set these in the app before you configure this, and then you can match the values up later on. So I'm gonna skip all these and come down here and click submit. Now, finally, there's one more Boolean that I want to set up, and that is the beep on or off. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this box and create a platform or switch. Hit submit. Now, the only Boolean I have left is value 17. So I'm gonna select that one here. Since I have nothing else, I'm gonna go ahead and click restore the last set value and hit submit. Now that I'm done, I'm gonna leave this checked and click submit. So now we see on here, I've got two devices, select the kitchen fan, and now I've got three controls here. One being the fan, one being the beep that I can turn on and off. And if you hear in the background, you can hear the fan beeping to indicate that that beep is being turned on and off. I've got the kitchen table fan here, which I can set the speed right here. And then we also have control over the kitchen table light. Now, if you do end up making a mistake and you selected the wrong value, you can always edit the devices later. However, you cannot edit the actual base ID 
for the device. If you mess that up, you'll have to delete it and re-add it. But it, for the attributes, you can make modifications. So if we go back down here to integrations, configure, it gives us the option to edit a device. And then we can go in here and find the device we want to edit and click submit. And then we can edit any of these ones that are checked. If you do uncheck any of these, it will delete them. If we want to edit the attributes, we can go from here. If we want to start over again, because we messed up with the primary ID, you can uncheck all of these and hit submit, and then it will delete the device. But if we click submit here, and we go to the kitchen table fan, we could modify our values here if we made a mistake. But everything is working fine, and everything is set up. So now you should be able to take this and extend it to whatever devices that you particularly have in your home. So there you go. That's how to get your keys required for local to you, get the integration set up, and a couple of examples of setting up your devices. If you do run into problems or have questions, the developer seems to be pretty active in his GitHub page, which I've got linked right here below. You can go up to the issues tab and search for your device and see if somebody else has had a similar problem with a potential solution, or reach out to the developer via that way. You can also ask questions down here below or join our Discord server. If you run into any problems, I'll be happy to try to help you as much as I can, but I have a very limited set of two your devices, as you can see, so I might not be able to help you with that exactly. And once I talk to my neighbor, John, and he gets his set up, I'll see how those Costco lights turned out for him. Because we're coming up on the holiday season, I've got a lot of advice videos coming up over the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. If you did find this video helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps it push out to other users so that they can find it and discover this project and set it up for themselves. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo right over here. And if you're looking for other videos on other home assistant integrations, I've got a whole playlist right here. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next video.